Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first six verses of Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and a longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. There we go. Okay. Pharaoh has found her a house and a swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs. For the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. And from Paul's second letter to Timothy. I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for this heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. This is one of my favorites. Jesus told this parable to some who, who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I I fast twice a week to the tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Uh. It's important in this passage to understand that how we read scripture and what we hear and how our, our understanding is not always how the people in Jesus' time understood it. When Jesus was referring to the Pharisees, he was talking to, about people who were some really great people. We look and when we hear about the Pharisees or the scribes, it's always, oh, here we go again. Here are the bad guys. Here are they, the people who just didn't get it. Um, but the, <laughs> Jesus was using the Pharisees as they were the people who were the well-educated, seminary-trained people who were the leaders of their churches. And I mean, they're looking for renewal. They were um, really the, the people, the, the major pillars of the, of the community. And were very faithful and, and were really seen in very positive light. And so Jesus is taking these people who everybody saw, wow, this is who we, uh, you know, the, the the ones who are making a difference in, in, our, in our synagogues and then twisting it all around. And you can twist it in many different ways. Jesus was taking his age and saying, sometimes people who you think really have it together don't. And sometimes people who you think don't have it together are really missing the point sometimes. And, and we, we, it's easy for us to make judgments about other people. 
And I have noticed many, many times that when people start making assumptions about people, you're going to find yourself in trouble. And I, in, Epis, in the Episcopal Church, there's, you know, sometimes if you just came in cold and didn't know anything about many of the Episcopal churches, you think, wow, look at all these well-dressed people. They've got it all together. They, they've never had any problems or any struggles. That is such a wrong reality, though. Um, I mean, I look out at, at, at the congregation and I see people who have lost children in horrible accidents, gone through divorces, horrible illnesses. You know, there really is you don't know where people are coming from. Um, I remember one time somebody was having a very um, public affair and it was um, seeing a, a, another woman and married. It was very, a very in a small town, you know, way too much sometimes. And this was a very public kind of a dynamic that was going on. And he was coming up for communion. And I'm, I'm sitting there in my complete judgmental mode of what is he doing here? What is this? It's like, I can't believe this. And <laughs> there's a part of me saying, why am I giving this man communion? And then it's like, don't you dare think that, Peter, because you do not know where this man, what's going on. He could be coming up saying, Lord, have mercy upon me. I am a sinner. I'm not worthy to be here. And I'm sitting here seeing, judging. I'm the one, the Pharisee at this point saying, oh, what are you doing here? You know, it's, it's like, and this, this story is, is kind of like the children's game where you, you move ahead and then you hit the spot and it says, go back to the, the story. <coughs> Once you have this, this, this self-righteousness of, of what are you doing here? I can't believe this. You know, it's like, go back to the beginning again. Uh, this this parable is a is a great a, a example of this parable is high school or college reunions. To your fifth or tenth high school high college reunion, most people are see how I'm married and have kids and look at the college I went to and look at the job I have and see how important I am and I'm really something. But then you go back to your 40th or 50th and you see the same people. It's like you're still alive! Yay! <laughs> Oh, how's your shoulder? How are your knees? How are, you know, you know, all of us have issues that we have to go through. Everybody's body is going, you know, goes through really challenges. Every family, and this is, I, I love doing weddings and funerals because every family, whether you're rich, poor, Hispanic, white, black, indigenous, you know, whether you're gay, straight, everybody has issues. Every family has weird people in it. Every family has, you know, people that don't get along, people who are gracious and wonderful. And, you know, it's just, it doesn't matter. This is part of the human condition. And it, there is this, we have these assumptions about other people. And oftentimes you could tell this parable, you know, for the Episcopalians, oftentimes we feel like, oh, we're really important people in the community. We do a lot for all sorts of other people. And, and this is where we fall into trouble. You go across the street to the Baptist church, and you could tell the parable in a completely different way. You, you know, a man walks into church and sees, you know, this rich person up front and thinks, well, at least I'm I'm not one of those educated fools like that. I'm just a poor working man. I know Jesus. I'm not, you know, you could tell a story in many different ways. You know, I'm not one of those scientific people. I just, you know, practical common sense person. Our way in which we judge other people is there's no end to how we can twist and turn it. Every culture there is has their way of feeling superior, feeling better, um, or this is our, I'm living up to the expectation of what others want of me. There's nothing wrong with, with helping out doing other people, doing for other people and, and, and caring for the community. The Pharisees were great people. But when you start thinking that when I come to worship, when I come to God and I'm bringing all my wonderful gifts and my, you know, God, here are my wonderful political perspectives too that really are so correct or my, um, this is what I've done this and I've, you know, rebuilt the church and I've done the food pantry and see how wonderful I am. Rather than coming to God, sharing our wounds, our fears, our frustrations, the things that have, in fact, I'm not proud of, the things that I wake up and I realize I, I should have done that and I didn't. 
10 years ago and I still regret it. I, you know, that I can drive by a house and say, you know, that was somebody I should have visited and I didn't. And I can still, things that haunt our life. And sometimes they go back 50, 60 years. This is what we bring to God. And it could be that, I mean, the, the number of people who have found their ministry through their brokenness, through their wounds, people who have gone through illnesses and become that working with other people with the same illness or people who've gone through addictions and the embarrassment of of facing that that that, that they need help that they that they are an addict though then end up helping so many other people in their addictions people who have lost loved ones and from that loss of loved ones that they're able to minister to others in grief even in little ways my first semester in college i went off and um, I had to take French. You had to take two and a half years of French in my college. In my first semester, needless to say, I I didn't do well adapting right away in college, and I um, basically failed French. <laughs> Would be an understatement. Um, and I just didn't get the picture, and I didn't get what college was about. And that class, I just it was a a deep embarrassment, and I. Um, it was one of the things I had to deal with in, in a small college. I actually got to know the French professor quite well in years to come after that. But ever since that first semester, what happened was um, other people would come into college and they would their first semester and I'd hear people say, I can't believe I'm getting a B in this class. I've never gotten a B or a C. And I'd look at them, I failed it. <laughs> and they would feel so much better. <laughs> I was, because of what I was, so my humiliation, I was able to make a lot of people feel really good. And and life was a lot better for them. I, you know, I ended up passing this two and a half years of French and I learned how to do that. And, and it was one of those things that um, you, you have to, and we all, we all have those moments when we realize that we are not the center of the universe. We are not the most important person. That really, in fact, I was talking to my my son the other day, and and we were talking about various issues of, of children and attention deficit disorder and various things. And I have my opinions, and I try to keep them quiet with my children. Um, I make serious efforts, and sometimes I don't always succeed. But he really had some good points about things that were different than mine. And I, after I left, I started thinking, I need to ask him more about that. That really sounded interesting to me. Um, I need to learn from him. And that's always a challenge. But there was, there was this understanding when I get to that place where we realize that there's more to this than I know. You know, talking to Francis about the pandemic and then the, the vaccines, there's so many different levels of all the vaccines and, and the COVID. And the, I mean, I, I hear things and I do the best I can. And I'm now not wearing a mask when I do the, this a service. I don't really know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I try to follow what the guidelines of what people are saying and to do the best I can. And, and there are times when I succeed and sometimes I, I don't do well, but this is what I bring to God. Not that I've got, some really good ideas for the diocese or for the parish, or these are things I really want to push for the parish. This is what we should be doing. No, it really starts, with, and, and the transformation of my life comes when I realize I, I might have missed this one, God. And God is doing a new work in the church that's very different than what we've known before. And, and this is what, from Jesus himself saying in this parable, what do you think you know? It's, it's, it's all flipped around. When Jesus spoke this parable, he, he begins it by presenting these two pe people. And everybody, when they first heard it, would have assumed the parable was going to go the other way. And assumed, well, the tax collector, he's not, you know, that's the guy that we, we, we stay away from. But Jesus flipped that around, the understandings of faith understandings of the of God's grace and, and mercy in ways that really upended the way that, that that we we hear things and I in my American Christianity have had my assumptions that are very 
I know when the peace was introduced into the church. I'm not a, somebody who really loves going around passing the peace with everybody. That's just not my thing. Um, I really, when I was a kid, we had morning prayer, and and that was a service I liked. Just you know, me and Jesus. Just leave all the other people out of it, <laughs> and and just like the, the the kind of way of focusing on. And I like these, you know, various prayers that understand of me and Jesus. But we are part of a community, and I am learning more and more that there is things that God are, is doing. I may be comfortable in one way of thinking. I may be comfortable in the food I eat and the way I worship, but sometimes I find that when I go to a different group and a different culture that I can be surprised. When I try, um, you know, I work with my grandchildren, they have their very limited understanding of food. <laughs> and it's all kind of white, bland, non-spicy food. Um, you know, potatoes and, you know, whatever it might be, but they, and I, I'm trying to introduce them to different ways of eating, <laughs> that you can try something new today, <laughs> and just a taste, just a taste, and this is where so often God is helping to understand that we need to hear and see and know that God is flipping our own understanding of what we think is right, what we think is good, what we think is the, the the holy and righteous people, God sometimes flips it around on us. I, I I look at somebody, you know, in a small town, I can't believe this person, what they're doing, and this is just wrong. And yet, this is where God's grace is shining. And we can learn, and I, I go, you know, the, where uh, other traditions are offering insights, where I, I go and I've at the Diocesan Convention and I, I get so frustrated with the, the kind of a liberal agenda that even though I can sometimes be rather liberal in some of my thinking, it bothers me when all of a sudden this, you know, the, it, it's kind of a voting block that you can't argue with. And I get very self righteous. <laughs> and as I complain about the, you know, what they're doing and they should be doing it in a different way. And then I have to listen, and I listen to the bishop's address, and I said, you know, I'm the one who's judging others. I'm judging these people for what they're doing, and I'm the one that needs to go like this, this parable says, back to the back of the line. I'm standing there making my judgments. And God is trying to call us back to the place where we're not blinding ourselves or cloaking ourselves with, with our own self-worth but rather opening ourselves to be worthy by God's grace and God's love. There is nothing that my children or my grandchildren or my wife can do that will earn my love. I just love them. This is a gift from God that God has given me to somehow be able to understand that there's nothing I'm able to do that's going to make God love me more. I need to just let go of all of these ideas I have and just understand that I am deeply, deeply loved, that God has a love for us as I look at my grandchildren or children or my wife and just the way she moves sometimes or says something. I'm just like, wow, that's really beautiful. That God might be looking at me and saying, that's really beautiful. I'm I'm really impressed. And it's not the things that I think would impress God. It's just who I am, who we are. In fact, it is a foible sometimes, the things that I'm embarrassed by, that is the most endearing. This is what we bring to God's God, the throne of God's grace, not our greatness, but ourselves, that we might be blessed that we might know that we too, like Paul, have run with endurance the race through our pains, through our wounds, through our isolation, and we don't need to bring any judgment on anyone else. We just come and know that we are loved, deeply, deeply loved, that God is waiting for us once again this day, that we would know that there's nothing that we do that will ever separate us from that love. Amen. Amen.
<clears throat> Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as, as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and as in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. O oh God, you have you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you make us glad with a weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please offer your own petitions and prayers at this time. We especially pray for the people of Ukraine, especially for those who've lost all their power. We pray for all those in harm's way, especially those recovering from hurricanes, and for those in, in the Mexico and the hurricane's path that is hitting the coast of Mexico at this time. We pray for our country. We pray for all the elections that are going on. for all those who are traveling. Join with me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks Amen. be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And the peace of God, which, which passes all our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the, the Father, Son, and, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you and all those whom you love, and, and all those who love you, in God's loving embrace, this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Thank you.